this is Robert Whitaker with Epica Animal Health. Today we're going to talk about some common cases that we see on a daily basis across all of our installed accounts in the United States, specifically speaking to general small animal practices, which makes up most of our install base, 70% of the install base with the Vimigo CT system are small animal general practitioners. So dentistry is where we see the most scans taken in a small animal practice. It's the quickest and easiest scan. It takes about 30 seconds to get a skull, full skull scanned by the Vimigo. Normally, we're seeing anywhere from 15 to 20 scans per month coming out of a typical practice on dentistry. Some are doing way more depends on the volume of dentistry that they're doing. By far, it's faster than using mouth rads. But what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about all of the common scans that are done. We're going to talk about what the fee is that we would charge for that scan. And we're going to keep track of, on a monthly basis, what, was it, what would this look like in terms of, uh, in terms of revenue. So this is a typical view that we can get from a dentistry scan. This view is actually not rendered automatically at the end of the scan. This is something that we manually have to do. It's called a panoramic view, but it's something that's available that can be shared with the client. It takes about two minutes to uh, produce a panoramic view after the scan is over. You would basically go to a workstation and do this. 3D dentistry. Uh, the, the whole 3D skull is actually produced with the scan automatically. So we get 3Ds. We can make movies of these 3Ds like this one here and share those with the client. Multi-planar view. This is all three of the planes that we can see the animal in. So this is an abscessed molar here. You can see this right here. And that's what we call the sagittal view. This is the dorsal view. This is what we call the axial view. CTs, conventional CTs, normally will capture in this axial plane, and that's it. But we can see all three of these planes with equal resolution with the Vimigo. That's what makes it special. And this is the same patient that was just on the multiplanar view with the abscessed molar. And in 3D here, we can see the abscess plainly. If I go ahead and let that skull turn on around, and we pick up the other side, we can see that that molar is normal on that side, which is the right. We can see our label here, right. And then as we spin it on around here, the left side pops up, which is where our abscess is. So orthopedics is our next most common scan. That could be of elbows, shoulders, the spine, hips, knees, uh, of course, anything from a hit by car could qualify for orthopedics as well. We see about, I would say, anywhere from five to a dozen scans a month in orthopedics, depending on the practice's volume of, you know, clients that bring in these types of patients with these types of issues. You know, if obviously if you're a poke and go type practice where you're only doing uh, vaccine and wellness, you know, you may not see as many orthopedics as a practice that's doing everything and actually has a mobile surgeon that can come in and, and correct uh, some of the things that are uh, coming in your door, you know, with TPLOs, for instance, on knees or, uh, you know, fragmented uh, remo fragment removals on elbows, etc. We normally see about four scans per month in or orthopedics um, for each associate veterinarian full-time. Uh, $600 fee is what we're scanning an orthopedic uh, case for. Sometimes we use contrast in orthopedics and sometimes there's no need to use contrast. Um, but our first one that we'll look at here is going to be arthritic elbows with fragments. This is the uh, NPR multiplanar view and we can go through each of the elbows. These elbows were scanned uh, bilaterally at the same time, no contrast. And it took about the same amount of time to scan these elbows as it would to scan a skull. 
Uh, the actual scan takes about 30 seconds. It takes about another 30 seconds or so to uh, get the data rendered out into a data set. And then we get this view plus a 3D view. So it doesn't take much time to uh, get elbows on the screen. And then this is what a 3D view would look like. Again, 3D is automatic. We don't have to do any extra work to get 3D on the screen. And the image quality is impeccable. We mentioned using contrast earlier. Um, stifles are a place where we can use contrast. As an interarticular injection of contrast agent, that would be a 1 to 10 ratio of omnipeg to saline. Inject it into the joint space, and then we would flex the joint for about 30 seconds. We did both knees in this case, or this client did. And the contrast in the joint space tells the radiologist and the veterinarian and the surgeon where there may be problems with structures, soft tissue structures, such as the meniscus or a cruciate or the cruciates, etc. Myelitis in the spine. Uh, as well as intervertebral disc disease, as well as, you know, any kind of uh, ailments with the spine can be identified. The spine is another place where we can use contrast sometimes, but not all the time. In this case, contrast really wasn't needed uh, because this is just a degenerative disease in the vertebra where you could see uh, these holes popping up in the vertebra here. This is also... Um, valuable in 3D. I just didn't put the 3D up for this case. Too late now. Masses and mets, very common. Used for the uh, Vimigo. About the same as orthopedics, but I think we'll see more masses and mets across the board no matter what kind of practice that you're running in the small animal world. Uh, we got a lot of uh, veterinarians that are sending us uh, Vimigo users that are us that are sending peregrine radiology a lot of cases with masses and mets in the thorax and the abdomen you know again four scans per month per associate DVM that's about a six hundred dollar fee IV contrast is required on all of these um, do we include contrast at that six hundred dollar fee no we're gonna charge for the contrast separately because contrast intravenously is dosage dependent when we charge for it uh, smaller animals such as a chihuahua aren't going to take near as much contrast as say a labrador retriever would so we uh, charge that fee based on dosage so our first case here we'll look at a multi-planar view of some um, uh, pulmonary uh, mets here in the in the lungs and and uh, some mass mediastinal mass it's pretty gnarly. What we're going to do, I'm going to thicken this up here where we can actually use more stacks on top of one another to give us a better view of what's going on in the lungs. And, you know, that way we don't mistake something that's supposed to be there, this pulmonary, for something that's not supposed to be there, such as a mass. So it really brings out uh, the detail in the masses that are in the lungs. This is, again, very common, you know, folks see a lot of uh, respiratory animals that come in and and uh, lung masses are, are fairly common if not pneumonia or some other ailment uh, having to do with the lungs kidneys something else uh, that can get masses or the abdomen itself so in this case uh, we're looking at a dorsal view of a pit bull abdomen with a kidney mass and uh, of course a gigantic spleen which is probably from the uh, anesthesia but I don't know it's it's a massive spleen though and a pretty gnarly mass there on the on the on the kidney we've got that in 3d here too so you can see what that looks like given that 3d is based on density each color represents a different density we know where these kidneys definitely have tissue that aren't the same density as the kidney tissue itself. So that's why these look to have blank spots. So both of these kidneys are absolutely diseased without any question. And then we have a feline patient here with a mediastinal mass. 
which pops in right here. This is a satchel view only. And then, of course, back here, this is a gigantic mass in the abdomen. It's basically taking up a good half of the abdominal cavity. Only sagittal view here. But we can see this in all three views if we wanted to. Ears and noses. So this is a skull scan. Uh, very easy to do. Very simple and quick. $450 fee. I'm being very conservative when I say four scans of these per month because we see more ears and noses coming through peregrine radiology from our Vimigo clients than we do just about anything else. I would say that was um, one of our highest case counts is, uh, you know, anything to do with the uh, with the bulla or the or the nasal passages have, have been a very high case count at, at peregrine. And right behind that would be, you know, lungs and abdomen uh you know, lungs and abdomen for masses. So four scans a month to be conservative. We're going to charge 450 for these. And we're going to use IV contrast because we want to be able to see uh, anything that's contrast enhancing in the nasal passages or in the, uh, in the, in the skull itself. You know, and sometimes we'll see things in the brain that, uh, you know, brain masses can pop out when we least expect them. You never know. It's not always a neurological case that can come in and prompt that. So, um, you know, it's about 1800 a month for a practice just in ear and nose scans at a minimum. And, you know, notice at the bottom of these slides here, I've been tallying this as we've gone, but we're up to about $7,600 each month here with ears and noses. So otitis externa, very common. I'm sure um, most of you general practitioners out there see quite a few OE cases. So this is a great way to give the pet owner a uh, really good view of what's going on inside uh, the animal in the, uh, in the ears. And then, of course, this is just the axial view. This is what we could typically get with just a conventional CT. Of course, this is a little better than that. But when we go to this dorsal view of the same patient, <laughs> conventional CT can't do this. We can't see this kind of detail. This is scanned at uh, 150 microns here. So we're, we're getting very detailed resolution in this patient. Rhinitis. So this is just your everyday, um, you know, moder mild rhinitis case here. Uh, one of the, the, I believe it's the left nasal passage uh, has some rhinitis, has some infection in it. You know, this can be treated, of course, with uh, antibiotics, etc. Uh, so real basic case here of rhinitis. But when we get into something a little more sinister, like a nasal foreign body or na foreign material in nasal passages, this is one of those cases where you can see this mineralized debris up here. Uh, the rhinitis is definitely there. We've got an infection, but... Uh, you know, we believe that this was caused, the radiologist believes this was caused by this mineralized foreign material that's up here. Uh, and we'll give you a 3D view of that too. Same patient. Got a 3D up. We'll just take away half of that skull and then rotate it. And then you can see that mineralized debris here as well. So very valuable information to uh, give to the client. Uh, it's good to catch these things right up front with uh, Vimigo rather than, you know, continually trying to treat uh, these nasal issues over time and spending tons of money. You can, you know, almost see right away what's going on. This animal actually had had a flush months before and, and treatment and nothing was working. And then they did a Vimigo scan and they found out exactly what was going on and why. So, you know, that that's our most common cases. Those are the cases we see come in and out of peregrine radiology every day. Those are the cases that we have over 200 Vimigos that are being used across the U.S. now. Every day, these are the cases they're seeing. I mean, you're going to see some freaky things that come in like GI foreign bodies. Uh, you're going to see brain masses that come in every now and then. You're going to see all kinds of uh, limb deformities and things that are just a little more rare. Um, but today, I'm just giving you the meat of what drives a Vimigo day in and day out. 
You know, it's going to be dentistry, it's going to be orthopedics, and it's going to be masses and mets in the abdomen, and it's going to be your, your, your nose and your ears. And each veterinarian can be generating about $7,600 in revenue off of this machine every month. And when you look at what this machine costs, well, it's about $4,500 a month to finance the machine with five years of service warranty and support. But if you want to know more details, there's two ways that you can get more details. Schedule yourself a web conference with one of your Epica uh, business development people like me. Uh, I cover Texas and Oklahoma and Arkansas and Louisiana and Missouri and, and Kansas. So if you're in my region, you give me a call. If you're not in my region, give me a call, send me an email. I'll connect you with the person that you can get a web conference with. The other way is to get a lunch and learn. Same thing. We're happy to come in and buy lunch for your team and present your team all the things that come with investing in a technology like Vimigo. What's it take uh, to put one of these systems in your practice and and what does that look like? What are some case studies that we can take you through? Uh, how does that affect things in terms of imaging the way you're doing it today with x-ray, with ultrasound? All of these details are going to be covered in a Lunch and Learn or a webinar. Again, contact me. I'll get you in touch with the right people if you aren't in my region. I'll put you in touch with people that are in your region that can come to you and do a Lunch and Learn or that can do a webinar for you. And you can always learn more at our website, epicaanimalhealth.com. Thank you so much for taking some time to watch this presentation today and have a happy holidays and a happy new year.